flying car. <gasps> oh, look at this. This is, this is amazing, guys. China unveiled its latest flying car. This is not science fiction, it's reality with cutting edge design and smooth aerodynamic lines. Have you ever sat in traffic and thought, there has to be a better way? What if the solution wasn't on the ground, but above it? Welcome to Cars Exposed, where we don't just talk about cars, we uncover the future of how we move. And today, we're diving into one of the boldest innovations humanity has ever imagined, flying cars. This isn't science fiction anymore. In 2025, the sky is no longer the limit, it's the next highway. From century-old dreams to certified flying machines hitting the skies, we're exploring how close we really are to lifting off. So buckle up, because by the end of this video, you won't just understand the future of transportation, you'll see it. Before we launch, hit that like button, subscribe to Cars Exposed, and ring the bell so you never miss a chance to stay ahead of the curve in car tech and futuristic travel. The idea of a flying car isn't as recent as you might think. It goes back over a century. In fact, it was Henry Ford himself who first dreamed of a flying vehicle in the 1910s. He introduced the Ford Fliver, a lightweight plane meant to be as easy to operate as a car. Though it crashed early on, it was a sign of things to come. Other attempts followed over the decades, including Glenn Curtis's Curtis Autoplane in 1917 and Waldo Waterman's Aerobal in 1937, a car with detachable wings, driven by a 100-piece Studebaker engine. In the 1914s, Robert Fulton introduced the Airphibian, a true car-plane hybrid, and of course, there was the Avro car, a flying saucer-like military vehicle from the 1950s, which, while groundbreaking, ran into technical limitations. So, despite all these early attempts, the technology was just never quite there. Fast forward to the 21st century and we're seeing real-world flying cars begin to take shape. In 2011, Marcus Leng's Black Fly made waves with its electric vertical takeoff and landing VTOL design. This UFO-shaped aircraft flew for a mere 20 seconds, but caught the attention of major players in the tech world, like Google's Larry Page. Hi, so Google co-founder Larry Page invested more than $100 million in two startups, two that are working on developing flying cars forward to 2023 and Aleph Aeronautics, one of the most promising companies in this space, took a giant leap forward. They received the green light for development of their Model A, which received certification from the US Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. This is a huge step for an idea that's been in the making for over a century. Aleph Aeronautics is one of the leading companies to bring flying cars into the real world. Their Model A, which received airworthiness certification in 2022, is a perfect example of how far we've come. The Model A, designed by Aleph's team, combines both road and air capabilities. What sets this apart is its ability to transform seamlessly from a car to a flying vehicle. The body of the car rotates 90 degree after takeoff, turning it into a biplane-like structure for forward flight. Measuring 17 feet long and 7 feet wide, the Model A fits into standard parking spaces and boasts impressive capabilities. 200 miles on the road and 110 miles in the air. That's a serious range for a vehicle designed to operate both on the ground and in the sky. It also features a sleek design with gullwing doors and a two-seater bubble canopy that gives it a futuristic Batman-like appearance. Though this all sounds pretty incredible, there's still one big hurdle. Regulations. While the Model A is close to launch, the infrastructure for flying cars is still being developed. NASA and the FAA are working on a sky highway to manage flying cars, drones, and the VTOL taxis. These regulations will be critical to making flying cars a safe and reliable part of urban mobility. Here's something you might not know. Flying cars might not be as exclusive as we think. Initially, the price tag for these futuristic vehicles may seem out of reach. For example, the Model A is priced at $300,000, but Aleph Aeronautics has plans to bring that price down over time, eventually aiming for a more affordable $35 in the future. While that's still a hefty sum, the idea is that, just like early commercial aviation, prices will drop as mass production and economies of scale take hold. And the real kicker, the Model A is designed to be easy to fly and drive. In fact, CEO Jim Duke of Knee claims users can be trained to fly and drive the vehicle in 15 minutes or less. Talk about a game changer. While this may sound like a luxury for the wealthy at first, cities like Silicon Valley may be the initial markets, 
with eventual efforts to make these cars accessible to more people. Well, this week, an Aleph Aeronautics Model A became the world's first flying car to receive FAA flight certification. It has a $300,000 price tag. But flying cars aren't just about the high-end market. The vision for flying cars goes beyond personal luxury. In the long run, companies and cities will need to ensure that flying cars become public infrastructure, just like schools, roads and airports. This will make the benefits of flying cars available to a broader population, especially when we consider that cities are already exploring ways to incentivize companies to provide access to underserved areas. Despite the excitement, there are significant challenges that still need to be addressed before flying cars become mainstream. One of the biggest hurdles is noise. If you think about the number of takeoffs and landings that would occur every hour in a city, it becomes clear that noise pollution could be a major concern. The good news is that companies like Aleph Aeronautics are working on reducing the noise generated by their vehicles by using electric propellers and other innovative design elements. But the bigger issue is infrastructure. For flying cars to become a practical part of everyday life, we'll need to build specialized vertiports for takeoffs and landings, charging stations, and sophisticated air traffic control systems. These systems will need to be integrated into existing urban landscapes without disrupting daily life. Another challenge is the environmental impact. While flying cars can reduce traffic congestion and travel time, they could also increase emissions, especially during takeoff and ascent. That's where electric flying cars, like the Aleph Model A and others, come into play. These vehicles run on electric power, significantly reducing their carbon footprint. However, for shorter trips, traditional cars might still be more energy efficient, which raises important questions about when flying cars will truly be more sustainable. Marina Traffic, Experimental 542, Bravo Juliet, uh, will be uh, taking runway 29 shortly. If you have a world-class electric propulsion system available, which no other aircraft have really been designed around in some way. And we're working on new technology to unlock the full potential of air mobility. Here's one common misconception you might have heard. Flying cars are the solution to traffic congestion. While it's true that flying cars could reduce the time it takes to travel across cities, they aren't a one-size-fits-all solution. According to Byron Thurber, an associate principal at RUP, urban air mobility won't solve congestion the way we think. If the volume of flying cars in the sky was anywhere near the number of cars on the road, we'd simply have traffic in the air. So the most likely use case for flying cars will be during peak hours in dense urban areas. Cities like New York, Los Angeles and London are prime candidates for early adoption. But just like with early commercial aviation, only wealthier individuals may initially be able to afford flying cars. Over time, as the technology becomes more accessible and prices drop, economies of scale will help make flying cars more affordable to the general population. So what's next for flying cars? We're not talking about a far-off dream anymore. Companies like Asker, Aleph Aeronautics and Pal-V are making serious strides toward bringing flying vehicles into the real world. Asker's A5, for example, is another flying car making waves. With its hybrid battery gasoline system and vertical takeoff and landing VTOL capabilities, it can fly up to 150 mph and has a 250 mile range. This model, expected for release in 2026, is another step toward mass adoption. But what about safety? This is another area where significant progress is being made. In fact, the FAA has granted a special airworthiness certificate to Aleph Aeronautics Model A, signaling the beginning of an era where flying cars are tested and regulated in the same way as traditional aircraft. The Model A, with its innovative design, is expected to begin limited operations by 2025, with full-scale production expected by 2026. And don't forget about the role of technology in ensuring safety. With autonomous flight systems being developed, flying cars may eventually be capable of fully automated takeoff, flight, and landing. This opens up the possibility of a future where anyone can operate a flying car without needing a pilot's license. But this, of course, will require rigorous safety standards and a reliable regulatory framework. As exciting as it all sounds, the journey is far from over. Infrastructure, regulations and accessibility still stand in the way. The real question is, how fast will we clear those runways? Now we want to hear from you. Do you believe flying cars will transform the way we live? Or is the world just not ready yet? Drop your thoughts in the comments, we read every single one. And if you enjoyed this look into the future of flight and innovation, do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to Cars Exposed and ring the bell so you never miss the next leap in automotive tech. Thanks for watching.